In the past, we've done some tests to see what happens if we heat up dry ice in a furnace, with a blowtorch, or even by pouring molten metal onto it. Today, we're gonna see what happens if we throw it in our mini arc furnace, which heats up several thousand degrees hotter than any of those. YouTuber Juicy Fox Hackers wanted to know what would happen if we put dry ice in our mini arc furnace. Well, JFH, we're not sure what's gonna happen because dry ice is exceptionally cold, but our mini arc furnace is exceptionally hot. It gets up to several thousand degrees in Fahrenheit or Celsius, and it's easily hot enough to melt glass, rock, or steel. What we're going to try is fairly straightforward. We'll see how the arc interacts with the dry ice. We'll see if it makes it melt or sublimate faster than normal. And we'll see if it's any different with solid pieces of dry ice or powdered dry ice. To start off, let's see the result with a solid chunk of dry ice. I'm also curious to see how the arc is going to react with the dry ice directly. Not the heat from the arc, but just the arc itself on the dry ice. All right, my first question was to see how the arc itself interacts with our dry ice. And unfortunately, while this does create a very powerful arc, it doesn't really have the ability to separate very far. I'm pretty sure there's very high amperage, but very low voltage running through this thing. And as a result, it does have a hard time separating out much. All right, I'm gonna make the arc and I'm gonna point it down and concentrate it onto that dry ice. And we're gonna see if it does anything. It might cause it to sublimate really fast, or maybe that much electricity and heat will cause some other unknown reaction. Cool things happening. First off, with just the arc concentrated on the dry ice, it did not melt because dry ice does not like to melt unless you have it under extreme pressure. And this is just normal atmospheric pressure. However, the heat of the arc was causing it to sublimate really quickly. It started dissipating way faster than putting it in a furnace or anything like that. It wasn't that quick. It was still just sort of a slow disappearance. But one thing we have learned about dry ice in the past is that what makes it sublimate fastest of all is if it's in physical contact with something putting out a lot of heat and these carbon rods put out a lot of heat. As we have the arc running, it's heating up whatever's in the furnace, but it's also heating up the rods themselves a lot. You can see that they are glowing orange when I take them apart from each other, even when there's no arc traveling between, they're still blazing orange hot. And when I put the hot rods directly in contact with the dry ice, that is when we started seeing it dissipate quickly. Uh, you can see that I've just carved right down into this piece and that was just by touching it to the rods which are still hot and still causing it to sublimate quickly on contact. So by taking the rods, arcing them together, heating them up and then physically touching them against the dry ice, that's when we start really seeing the dry ice get carved away quickly. That might be the fastest I've ever seen anything carved through dry ice. We're going to do the same thing again but on this slightly larger block and I'm just going to start poking holes right down into the surface of the dry ice with our carbon rods. Those rods turned this dry ice into just Swiss cheese, like in no time flat. They just tunnel right through that. Look at that, full of holes. All right, we've got a little metal nut here and we're just gonna melt that right on the dry ice. Molten metal does a pretty good job of carving right through this solid carbon dioxide. Let's give it a chance. Beautiful. So that was a nut. Now it's just a ball or a blob. I don't think I can even call that ball shaped. Melted down in just a couple of seconds and then started carving his way this beautiful little hole right down into the dry ice. One more thing that we want to test is to see what happens if we take a bunch of our dry ice, crush it up into a powder and then put that into the arc furnace.
Oh boy. Oh, it's pretty cool. It's like arcing down inside it. Well, Juicy Fox hackers, no, we can't quite melt dry ice in the arc furnace. We can get it to sublimate pretty quickly, especially if we take those blazing hot carbon rods and touch them to the dry ice itself. I also really liked the look of when we had the powdered dry ice with the rods underneath. That was a really cool underglow, just all lit up quite a bit. Looked very neat. Does not melt, but does do some really cool stuff. Thank you for your suggestion. If you check your YouTube inbox, we'll be sending you 25 bucks. Remember guys, if you've got a fun idea, things you want to see us try on the channel, let us know down in the comments. And if we use your idea, we'll send you $25. Guys, thanks for watching, but the fun doesn't end here. That box up at the top will transport you directly to our last video, and you should go check that one out. The other box will show you what YouTube thinks you should be watching next. And if you are not subscribed to our channel yet, just hit the bomb to get in the club, and that way you never miss out on the fun. Don't forget to ring that bell, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.